what's up? Serena Apia here from thriftdiving.com. And finally, we are finishing this wingback chair makeover. It has been literally a year. It's been over a year, actually. And I've been documenting everything that I've been doing to this chair from replacing the springs, the webbing. I was doing some upholstery classes and had the help of a great teacher that got me this far. Well, guess what? I don't have any more upholstery classes. So that means I'm on my own. And I'll admit that I'm scared. I've been procrastinating on getting this far. So we've got to figure out the rest of this chair. So we're going to do the back seat part, the sides, the back, and then we've got to do the dust cover. So let's jump into it and hope that things go well. All right, so let's jump into it. Now, if you recall at the end of part eight, and you can find that down below in the description, the coconut fiber had to go on first. And this part was important to make sure that there was enough coconut fiber. So when you push your hand on it, it wasn't clumped together and it was enough to make sure that you couldn't feel the springs. So there was enough coconut fiber and I used my arrow fastener stapler, which I've teamed up with them for this video, just to test out their upholstery stapler. And I secured it to the edge. You'll notice here, I'm not pulling it over the edge of the chair, but I'm just pulling it up to the very edge so it lines up. So after the coconut fiber was in place, I pulled up the layers of cotton batting. There's two layers of cotton batting here. Just be very careful. One thing that I did learn in upholstery class is that this is very delicate and you have to put it on very delicately too. So you'll see here, I'm just trying to shape the back of the chair, the top part so that it maintains the shape of the chair. And once that was in place, very carefully stuffed into the sides of the chair, it was time for the Dacron. There was no doubt this chair was going to be very comfortable. The only thing I wish I had done differently though here is I wish I would have cut a piece of Dacron just a little bit wider because I noticed when right there where my hands were, I noticed that it seemed like it needed to be tucked in just a little bit more. There was a little bit of a gap there, but I didn't have any more to cut and I didn't want to waste this piece. So I just worked with what I had very carefully tucking it into place and smoothing it out. And you'll see what I'm doing here at the top. Again, this is what I did for the sides and you can find that I believe in part seven is kind of rolling it under just a little bit. This is how you're creating that nice curve along the edge, but you're not letting it come over the edge of the chair. The next step was to cut a piece of velvet for the back seat cushion. And I just sort of test fit it just to make sure that it was gonna be large enough, that it was gonna fit okay, making sure that it was straight and even. And then I started from the back at the top in the middle. So you'll notice here that I notched the center of my fabric and then I line that up with the center of the back of the chair. This is important. One thing I learned in upholstery is it's very important to put that temporary staple to center your fabric so that it doesn't shift around on you. So I added a staple there, and then at the bottom, I pulled it tight and added another staple in the center to secure it. Once I've got that center secured, I can pull that fabric tight and work from one side only and figure out where I need to make my cuts. Remember, this is a big block of fabric that we're trying to fit seamlessly around this chair. and. There are a lot of places where we need to cut this fabric so that I'll be able to shove pieces in and be able to pull it tight. So you'll see here, I'm sticking my fingers into the chair, trying to locate where that hole is because that is where I need to make a cut. So I've got some chalk here, I'm marking the fabric and then I'm using my scissors to cut straight across. You can also measure with a tape measure or a ruler, but I'm cutting to that chalk mark. And so when I stuff the fabric back into the chair, that's where the opening is and I should be able to stick that piece all the way through and pull it tight. And it's a lot of adjusting. Seriously, this is the part that I was so afraid of because, you know, professional upholsters, they just know where to cut. They know how to fit this piece of fabric like a glove. And I was a little bit out of my, I felt a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I worked the fabric as much as, as, much as I could remembering what I learned in class and just remembering to pull as tight as you can to get rid of those wrinkles. So I tucked the fabric under, I thought there'd be a nice little fold there and then I just pulled it as tight as I could, making sure that the cotton batting was not falling over, you know, on the other side, making it too bulky. So 
I'm pulling here, I'm pulling, I'm pulling. And finally I get to a point where I'm like, okay, I think I can put a staple here and I think we're good to put some additional staples. And trust me, there were times when I would have to go back and just take those staples out and redo it. At least I did it a couple of times, but when it started to look like it was a smooth corner, then I just can continue to work my way with the staples, smoothing and pulling as I went. So once the one side was done, I removed the center staple and I continued pulling on the other side, hoping to just create a nice smooth surface. And I made the same cuts, again, finding where those openings were in the chair and then trying to fit that fabric around the chair, pulling and stuffing and it was a lot of work. <laughs> and around the back here, I did put some little slits here, some relief cuts, because the back does have a slight curve and I just wanted to make sure that that curve was not going to cause any wrinkles in the fabric. So just put a couple of relief or some relief cuts and then pulled it tight and finished stapling into place. So when I was done the top, I thought it looked pretty good. There were some spots on the back where I thought eh, it might be a little lumpy. I think maybe some of the cotton batting had spilled over onto the back of the chair and I stapled over it, but I did make some of those corrections. But considering that this was my first time doing a seat back on a wing back chair, I thought it was a pretty good job. Now, once the top was secure, I started working my way down. And I have to admit, this part was very, very challenging. You see here that I'm making some snips. I'm fitting the fabric around through these holes in the chair, through these openings, trying to secure the fabric. And each time I pull, I'm hoping that these creases will disappear. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I spent almost a full day, no joke, trying to secure the back of this chair to where it didn't have any wrinkles or creases. And it was very difficult, I will admit. But I'll also tell you, don't be afraid of challenging projects. They are scary. They will make you, you know, sweat a little bit while you're working on them. But overall, you know, when you run into problems like this, you know, for example, my right side looked good. My left side was very, you know, wrinkled. I was able to work through what the problem was. So next project, I know, okay, be very careful with the cuts that you make. Pull as tight as you can and work those corners. And once you learn these things, then you're able to apply it to the next project. So the next step was to apply the cording to the wings, to the outside wing. Now I already had made the cording and you can find that down below in one of the previous videos that I had done, but it needed to follow along the shape of the wing. And I used my stapler to get that into place. I didn't realize where the tail part of this cording was gonna go. It really needed to go underneath of the arm, but instead I cut it. What was I thinking? And I cut it too short and so, you know, next time, I know. All right, so moving on, this is curve ease, and this is what's gonna allow us to put the fabric on the outside of the chair, especially around parts that are curved. You can cut it with scissors, just be very careful and make sure that you're not using your good scissors. I'd never used curve ease before, so I had to go online and search for a video on how to use curve ease. So instead of me trying to explain it to you, I will give you the link down below to a really great instructional video that I found on YouTube that will help you do your chair project as well. But you can see here that I'm going right into the center of that hole, making sure that it's secure next to the piping that I added, the cording. And then I put on some cotton batting, trimmed it down, and also did some cotton batting on the side of the chair too, down below. And now it was time to cover it up and trim away the excess fabric. So using a piece of chalk, I outlined the curve ease from underneath of the fabric, and I'm using that as sort of a guide because I'm gonna trim about, leave about half an inch to five eighths of an inch around this piece, and that's what's gonna tuck underneath of the curve ease. Around the bottom and around the back, I left probably about maybe two or three inches so that I can staple it to the back of the chair. Next, I slightly closed the teeth of the curvies, and once I did that, then it was time to shove the fabric, well, not shove, but very gently push the fabric into that gap and then close it with my fingers. You'll notice there's a little bit of puckering at the top where the curve ease, you know, going around a curve, but with a little bit of pulling on the back, it helps to get rid of that a little bit. It's not you know, it's not a complete fix. I'm sure there are tricks that upholsterers know in order to get nice clean lines around curves. But for me, I think this is good enough. So I pulled it as tight as I could in the back, 
stapled it into place. And considering that this is my first time, I thought I did a pretty good job. The next thing will be to use a mallet and go around and make sure that you've closed all of that curvies. So just very gently use the mallet to uh, close that curvies. So next it was time to do the side of the arm. So I added some burlap, making sure that it was really tight. And during part four or five of this series, we had done the arms, but we hadn't attached them to the outside. So I stapled those in place, attached the trim, and then added some curve ease and some cotton batting and laid a piece of fabric over and pretty much outlined it the way I did for the side or the outside wing using chalk, trimming it down to about five eighths of an inch. And here we actually had to flip the fabric up so that we could attach it on the underside of the arm. You'll see here that I've got some cardboard in place. This just is a stabilizer. This helps to keep that uh, arm nice and crisp. So then I folded it back down, tucked the sides of the seams into the curvies, and then tried to figure out how to finish off the bottom. This is where I had to make some cuts because the leg was right there. So I just had to trim away, staple it into place, and uh, both in two places, the bottom and the back. And I just tried to pull so that it didn't have any wrinkles in the fabric. And I think it looked pretty good. Now with the wings and the side done, it was looking pretty good, but I still had to do the back. And this is where I ran into some problems. So the first problem was the cording. Now you know with velvet, it has a nap to it. So depending on how you hold it up to the light, it either looks dark or it looks light right? Well, unfortunately, the, the cording looked very dark when I held it up to this light side of the chair. And I thought, well, this is going to look very strange. And so I ended up having to make a little bit of an adjustment to the cording so that I was able to match it up to the fabric, to the, the nap, I should say. I didn't anticipate the back to be too much of a problem. I did it pretty much the same as I did the wings and the sides, added the burlap, added some cotton batting, made sure that it was a nice tight fit. And the bottom part, this was the most challenging at first because I wasn't sure how this cording needed to go on the bottom, how to finish this all off. Well, thankfully I'd taken a ton of video when I was tearing the chair down and I could look back at part one and say, oh, that's how I had attached, that's how it was attached. And so this is how I have to attach it. So I folded it over the cording. You see here that I, have a little bit just hanging there because I ran out of cording. So I'll have to make some new cording when my new fabric comes because I am a little short and I'll finish off the cording. But you see here, I'm stretching the cording along the back. I'm finishing it off on the right hand side. And then that will uh, continue on the bottom of the chair. And right here where I stretched it, the back part of the fabric will just tuck underneath of that and everything will be stapled in together. So I just kind of left the bottom of the chair unfinished because again, I have to make some adjustments. All right, well, here's where things got a little crazy for me. This is all the fabric that I had left and I finished it off the same way that I did the sides and the wing. It, you know, I used my chalk and I marked where the curve ease was and then I trimmed it to about half an inch, five eighths of an inch. But for some reason, however I was putting this fabric on, it didn't work too well because I'd have one side secured and then suddenly the other side was too short and there wasn't enough fabric. So what I probably should have done was tuck the fabric inside and then trimmed it. And if I had done that, I wouldn't have had the problems that I did. I would have had plenty of fabric to fit in there and the back would be totally done. But you see up here in the corner, it does have some parts that are starting to unravel because there's just not enough fabric to fit in there. So I will fix it. But look at this. It looks so much better than what it did when I started on this several days ago. And you just have to come back for part 10 because I will be finishing off sewing the cushion and showing you how I'm gonna do that. That part should be pretty easy. I've done that before. And I'll be refinishing these legs and fixing any errors, any problems that I have with this chair. There is some wrinkling at the bottom that I may wanna fix. But overall, this chair looks great and I can't believe that I actually 
did all of this. I think I did learn something in upholstery class. <laughs> so be sure to watch parts one through eight down below. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave a question or comment below. And a big thank you to Arrow Fastener for supplying the stapler for this part of the project. And you can find them at arrowfastener.com. I will see you next video. Thanks for watching.